What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Yes, you saw the thumbnail. That is right. Should he be known? But we have to discuss it. We have to light. We have to put the flame to his feet so he can see what his ambitions are are not there yet, Brian. He has ambitions. You've talked about it a long time ago. But the path that he is on that road is slipping away from him, Brian. Just like we've been giving all the praise, we've been saying hell, Feige, for a long time now. All the way up until Endgame, all the way to No, no Way Home. And now we see the aftermath of perhaps feeling yourself too much and just letting things ride. We've also talked about Kevin Feige not being perhaps the type to be that confrontational, Brian. I don't know, but it seems like he, Brian, and we've also said years ago, could he be working too hard? Could he be spreading himself too thin for that attention that these projects need, Brian. The wheels have fallen off the wagon. There's no denying it. There's no buzz. Nobody's talking about the MCU other than negative emotions we're, overcoming we're, we're you. <laughs> but they're not talking about it as like a, a, a positive topic, right? It's, it's yeah. former stars distancing themselves. It's VFX artists complaining about the work conditions. You know, it, it, it's it's articles about what's happened to the box office, what's gone wrong. That's what the MCU trending has become. Right, it's crazy. I was having a conversation with a friend and he told me that a friend of his that works with the MCU doing props, it's nonstop, nonstop asks to do this, do that, do this, do this. And it's working and working and working. So this complaint from VFX uh, 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 personnel is not incorrect. So Brian, if you're Bob Iger, what, you're Bob Iger, you call Kevin Feige, hey, come into my office. We got to talk. What are you going to talk to him about, Brian? The number one thing that, that you would talk about is like, okay, how do we clean up everything we have out there in the smoothest way possible? Like they've talked about reduced content, sounds good, but when everything is interconnected, reducing content is a lot harder than when you have everything be separate. That's just reality. We talked about in the context of Echo, which feels like a show dump. Yeah. That like if it wasn't so tied to Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk, maybe doesn't see air but disney's kind of stuck with that i think my second thing would just be back to basics build compelling heroes with simple story structures and get the tone right if anything the jonathan majors legal trouble was probably karma for disney putting you know all their eggs in the majors basket which was never the plan and never what happened in phase yeah. one, two, and three. There's almost like a weird, like, well, you kind of, you were you were vulnerable to one thing going wrong, and it did. So I think that's probably the second thing I would say is you need to rebuild heroes. And honestly, if that means recasting bigger name established heroes, do it. I'm Actors saying, so if that well, I'm saying no. I mean the here. I'm saying if that means doing a new Thor. Okay. The character, but recasting it the way we've recast Batman so many times, that's okay because the character is identifiable with the masses yeah. as opposed to venturing further into heroes that people are less familiar with. Yeah. I yeah. think that's at least something that has to be talked about. I think the, yeah. the other thing is how do you play the mutant card in a way that redirects the negative buzz but also kind of sets you up 
to bring Avengers universe kind of back around. I think that's the other sort of elephant in the room and it's sitting there on the shelf and like we know they're going to do something with it, but we don't know exactly know when. And I don't mean needle drops from the 90s you know, theme song. <laughs> so I mean, like, do you want, you know, I think that's a viable discussion. If they wanted to shell, if they literally wanted to just use the majors situation as an excuse to effectively curtail the multiverse saga entirely and just say we would rather focus on mutant stories for a number of years and then kind of go back to Avengers. Yeah, that, that would make a lot of articles. But from a fan base, like, that would be forgotten the minute you put an excellent X-Men movie up on the screen. Yeah. And then the last thing I would say to him is, you've been a hero to the company for a long time, and there might be a role for you elsewhere here, but you saw Alonzo. Don't think I won't do it. That would be cool. the last thing I would tell him. Because, like, you, that's the thing is, you don't, like, whatever the real reasons were why Victoria Alonzo was let go, the fact that he, that Iger did it clearly was meant to send a message internally that nobody is untouchable. Because yeah. she should have been about as untouchable as anybody in the room. By the way, if I, if I needed to recast Captain America, I would recast him with that dude from Night Agent. Gabriel Basso. By the way, that show is unbelievable i'm late to that show it is awesome i i mean did i ever mention it to you i don't I think i ever remember. mentioned it to you yeah gabriel basso he, he does a great job in that that show is really well done that show is really yes. really well done did his did his fighting and and, and didn't it remind you of yeah. that movement a, from captain yeah he's like, a very he's, he's an athletic guy yeah for as much as we have praised kevin feige for all the great things that he has given us we have to get at him for I'm sorry to say, but not great things that we've gotten so far. That Blade announcement should have gotten people's attention, that it came out of nowhere. And look where we are now. Charlize Theron, when you saw that clip in uh, Multiverse of Madness, that should have been a telltale sign. Like, uh-oh, he's and getting the stars in. The other day. She told us the other day, no idea, no idea. She had no idea oh, about like, no idea what's going, going or what's going to happen. Nothing. It's, I don't know where it's going. It's called nowhere. I think the easiest way, if you wanted to bring in the mutants, Xavier's been wiping minds all these years, yo. There's no way, Brian, that at the, the end, at the end of Eternals, when you see uh, the the Arisham, uh, the judge in the freaking her there's no way people aren't going crazy i'm sorry i'm sorry xavier's been wiping minds all this time the mutants have been around i don't mind you showing me mutants fighting these aliens in endgame just to go back and then showing us what xavier has been doing for these events that is some serious situation right there of what he's been doing. Because why? Because he has to. And to hear him perhaps talk to someone and explaining why he needed to do it is compelling to me. I, I agree. The flip side of that coin, which I'm afraid of, and I am now mm -hmm. officially on guard for, mm -hmm. is that they throw whatever dollars it takes to make Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman part of the centralized MCU. Oh, hell no. I'm out. That I am too, but I'm saying like they know that film is going to be a hit and they yeah, know yeah, that yeah. like if they want instant buzz with the fans, make Dead, Deadpool and Wolverine our heroes, even if they're somewhat anti-heroes, make them part of the, the, the hero lineup that doesn't have much teeth right now. Like I, that's my fear. That's my fear that's sitting there that would feels a little bit more like what Kevin Feige has been doing lately. Now, I do have a question for you, though, Yeah. which is, okay, so you're putting this out there, which is a hot, hot take. If you move him out of that role, who gets it? Because I don't think you could promote from within the parliament based upon the state of the MCU. You would have to basically hold the entire administration accountable for what's happened. So similar to a sports team firing its head coach, they would have to go to the outside to get a new head for Marvel Studios. And I, 
I, that's the part where it gets tricky to me. I don't think you, if you're Iger, you're not making that move unless you have the next person lined up. And, you know, we'll see Gun and Saffron, but, you know, on, like, but what, Brian, who else is, is ready made to do that? I could think of, I could, the only people, the only people I could think of in house are honestly like, here, here's name a wild more. one. What if you, what? Name more? No, I was thinking, what if, you, no, that, I was actually thinking bigger. What if you made a crazy trade? What if you traded Kevin Feige to Star Wars to get rid of Kathleen uh. Kennedy and you traded Favreau back to Marvel? I mean, just because, I mean, director of Iron Man 1, I know he's been Star Wars guy for a number of years now, but. The thing is that Kevin Feige, I don't know, wants to take over a studio. I think he wants a bigger role, as you said. I don't know if he's up for that. I don't know if he's up for that built world building universe or making movies or produ being producer. He's been doing it for how, for, for however long. Okay. Then what if you made Kevin Feige president, Filoni gets Star Wars on his own and Favreau comes over to run Marvel? I'm good with that. That's the only in-house solution that I see where you wouldn't have the, the baggage of every other MCU decision already on the hands of Nate Moore and the other and Winderbaum and the other people who are already in the room. But if you didn't want to go to the outside, Favreau's the only proven sort of director, producer, writer who's done something with the MCU and is sort of a nerd and a geek at heart and a Disney guy. Yeah. I don't know if he'd do it, but that's the only person I could think of internally that had, would have some credibility with fans and with creatives. Yeah. But that would you imagine that? That would be crazy. If they did a restructure. That's a, it's a shakeup. That is a shakeup. If you're used to seeing a certain thing and it just keeps going up, and now it's just sort of going down and, and you hearing the negative tone towards your product, obviously something has to give. And you have to blame the person at the top, the one who's been green lighting these things. Right, Kevin Feige is like, how many more ch bad movies do we have to have before we have this conversation, Brian? I don't think you're, so in fairness to your take, which I think is early, I don't think we're that far away. When you look at, and people are gonna say, what are you talking about? I was like, well, hang on, look at the box office. That will power all of these discussions. Up Going into this year, Yes, they were lower, but they were still massively profitable, right? Thor 760, mm -hmm. Wakanda's in the 800s, Doctor Strange 2 almost got to a billion. Yeah. But Quantumania, it's not clear they made money on that. 476, lowest MCU, and all of these films carry $200 million budgets. Mm -hmm. We, you, Our thoughts on the Marvels are well known. If that movie is a hit, I, I don't know. I'll come I up with some know. crazy thing that I'll do <laughs> on the show, because but my point is that movie yeah. has hundred million dollar type loss written all over it to me. Yeah. That movie could do three fifty total, and I would be like, okay, that could do three hundred, and I could be like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now, if you start to string movies together that are firmly losing money, the conversations will change rapidly. And the problem we've said is calendar, because other than Deadpool, I don't think Captain America four, whatever it's titled. <laughs> is a guaranteed mega hit for them to change the title into what a brave new world from new world sound Order. that sound brave new world sound too disney for me i'm just about to say it's <laughs> right it sounds a little soft <laughs> that sounds too disney for me for this sort of character for this thing that you were going for Let's see, Brian. It'll be just another thing that happens that if it doesn't. The, we're, this is going to be Fire Kevin Feige number one. If this these is like movies you're, you're continue. Putting it into the universe. You're not saying he has to be I'm fired yet. The you're saying you're no, putting no, no, no. the conversation into the universe. Yes. I mean, I mean, if Kevin is listening, I'm sorry, brother, but you've been. I mean, we have to have a sit down and talk. Because this cannot continue. And he knows it. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of 
if you were Bob Iger, would you contemplate in bringing Kevin Feige in and having a conversation? I'm pretty sure, Brian, he's had him. I'm pretty sure he's had these conversations. Not to the extent of your job is on the line, but I don't want to get to that conversation just yet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's that, fix I think this. It's that. I think it's that. I think it's, I don't, yeah. it's like, it's in the room, even if it's not spoken. They're like, they both know, they yeah. both have the experience of like where it's ultimately headed if the box office doesn't turn around. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this take. Uh, hit that like and subscribe. Hit that uh, notification bell. Please comment in the comment section below and share it with your friends. And we will see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on! Yeah!